Hey guys, Josh here, Jay, back with another video for you today. We're going to take a look at the Gigabyte Radeon R9 290X. This is the Windforce edition. They've done Windforce for pretty much every card now. And this is going to be the new one with 4GB of memory and their new Windforce 450W out. So basically, it says the more you put in, the more pleasure you get out. Um, so that was off the website, by the way. I didn't make up that really cheesy quote. Um, so round the box quick, we're just going to take a brief look. There's a bit of like specs on the side, a bit of information on 9290X. On the back, it shows the cooler, which I'll go into a bit more detail in a minute. Um, but it also tells us the main feature on the left there. Um, but basically, I can tell you all this in a minute, so we'll just go around the box quick. A few diagrams about the heating and cooling systems. But yeah, um, that is the box. Let's get the box out of the way and bring the card in. Okay, taking a look at this card, I'm gonna start off by the top because it looks damn sweet. This is the bracket that is giving a bit of rigidity and support but also just looks damn cool. Uh, also, it's matte black as well. It does look sheer, slightly shiny, but that's because of the uh, the light we're using. Over at the right-hand corner, we've got the 8-pin and 6-pin power this requires. It's going to take about 600 watts on average. That's what Gigabyte say on the website you're going to need. Um, but, you know, these things can vary slightly from system to system. So the heat sinks you can see just about there, they're the Triforce coolers that we've seen before. And basically these work in the way of, uh, let's try and get it in an angle here. Basically they're like a house, basically. Basically, basically, like that, the cooler. So basically, <laughs> basically, it's not saying basically, the, the, uh, the air comes through and then goes down kind of straight off rather than going directly onto the heat sink. They say that this works more efficiently than standard cooling method and then the fans are slightly angled at 10 degrees as well which we might just be able to make it out there it's quite difficult to see though uh, while we're here let's take a look at the inputs and outputs so we've got two DVIs on this a full size HDMI and a display port and then we've got the bracket for cooling but we didn't really need this because it's an open card design but it's there anyway so on the bottom we've got our uh, PCI 16 slot also, there's a few capacitors you can see at the end of there as well. This heating does look cool. Anything that you can see like this, I'm a big fan of. I do like open card designs and things like this. So, I lag. Uh, also, you can see the heat pipes through there. There's two 8mm and four 6mm heat pipes on this card. Uh, you can just about see them on the back as well. The two 8, uh, 8mm are where the two things are there. And then you've got the 666. The number of the beast. And also, there is another six mil just coming out there just about to see what goes into it um so yes let's measure this and take a look at the the length of it oh, let's get me tapey so with the cooler and we won't wow without the bracket it's going to be 283 millimeters long but with the bracket it's going to be 200 and about 94 millimeters long there you go. So, one other thing to note is it comes with a little special switch. That's going to be difficult to see on this. You should just be able to see it. It's just there. It's in white. It's very small. Just about to see me switching that over. But this is two modes of operation on this card. So, as it is currently, with the switch nearest to the bracket. It's running in performance mode, which basically doesn't really limit the fans and lets you get more performance, especially if you're going to be overclocking, you're going to need to have a quite a higher fan speed. And to the right is the silent mode, which keeps everything nice and quiet. If you're running a, a beastie but quiet rig, you can use the silent mode if you wish. But either of there, it's defaulted to it's on uh, performance when you get it. So basically chuck it in, leave it like that for most of us. On the back, you can see the where the fans come out, and then there are a few of the heat sinks as well. Um, one thing I would like to see on these wind force is maybe make this bit all covered, although it's going to get a problem with cooling. But either put wind force along there or make a back plate. We've seen it on the Gigahertz edition, but a back plate that has uh, wind force written on that'd be quite cool. Just an idea, something we could possibly see in the future. But there's the PCB, that's actually gloss, that PCB. It's picking up in the light, you can just about to see it there. 
It's very, very shiny. But if we could have a matte black PCB as well, I'd pretty much be uh, in nerd heaven right there. Um, so this is 10, 24 megahertz straight out of the box. Four gigabytes of DDR5 on this as well. It's going to be running at 5,000 megahertz. The memory bus is 512 bit. It's running DirectX 11.3, OpenGL 4.3. DirectX 11.2, sorry. 11.3 isn't out. Uh, Mantle as soon as it comes out as well. Probably, hopefully, fingers crossed in a couple of days. It's been delayed again. Yeah, I'm pretty much used to that now. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So that was a look at the, the Gigabyte Radeon R9 290X Windforce Edition. Edition. Yeah, pretty cool. It's big, it's heavy, it's long. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you all in the next video.